You're listening to Release Your Resistance with Bex Beltran, episode 46. Welcome to Release Your Resistance. This is Bex. The only reason why any of us don't have what we want in life is because of our own resistance. Right now, I'm learning how to recognize and release my resistance, and this podcast tells you how you can release your resistance so that you can live the exact life that you want. Let's get started. A lot of people are looking forward to the end of 2020 they're over it, or maybe they're waiting for things to go back to normal, or in the U.S. and maybe other parts of the world too, people are waiting for the current election cycle to be over. Maybe you're waiting for so many things to just be over. Have you heard the expression, I'm so over this? I want to explore other ways that you may be over right now. Maybe some of these apply to you personally. Maybe you have experienced them in the past. Or maybe you can use some of these examples as a metaphor for something else in your life that you really are over. If you're over anything right now, or even if you don't think you are, or if you're not really sure what I'm talking about yet, I want to show you how you may be creating your own over situation. And once you recognize it, you can take charge and you can really get over it. I'll show you where and why you may be overdoing it and give you a general strategy, an idea to overcome it. That's right. I have this perfect idea for you, which I will share after I describe the overs. Then I've also got some specific individual strategies that you can use to deal with the overs. Here are some common overs. Overwhelmed, overweight, overdrafted or over budget, hungover. What causes all of these overs? Let's break them down. Overwhelm. To overwhelm something means to defeat it completely, to bury it, to drown it or submerge it. But usually when we say we're overwhelmed, we don't mean we're physically overwhelmed by something like water or dirt or matter. We usually mean we're mentally overwhelmed and we feel defeated and we feel like we've been overtaken by a force and are powerless to pull out or dig out from under it. What's wrong with overwhelm? I think mental overwhelm is like putting your brain in a spin cycle. Once you enter the cycle, instead of feeling open and instead of thinking clearly, you feel threatened and closed off and you need to defend yourself. Your brain is on high alert for everything that could or might go wrong and it gives everything equal, urgent importance regardless of how likely it is to happen. When everything is a priority, nothing can be a priority. So not only are you completely heightened emotionally, you also don't have the thinking capability and decision-making bandwidth to rationally and logically choose a course of action. What causes overwhelm? I can think of at least two ways this shows up, and you may have even more examples in your own life. Overthinking and overcommitting. And both of these can stem from not allowing yourself to make decisions and stick to them. You may find yourself overthinking when you have a decision to make. You may worry about not choosing the best option. You might flip-flop back and forth between the options. You might consider all the what-if scenarios and think of even more what-if scenarios. The more you think, the more you think. And pretty soon, you are overthinking what might have been a simple decision and you've added worry and fear and confusion and indecision and you feel completely overwhelmed. So that's an example of how overthinking can lead to overwhelm. Another way I see people feeling overwhelmed is when they overcommit. This overwhelm 
can also stem from fear and worry, but this time it's fear of missing out, worry of letting someone down, concern over not doing enough, believing that you have to do it all or something terrible might happen. What do you do when you're worried about all of those possibilities? Maybe you tell yourself you will do it all or you accept another task or you add it to your list instead of declining to do it. And maybe you tell yourself you have to do it all and you're the only person who can do all these things or that you really want to do them all because you don't want to drop any of them. And then when you see or realize everything you've committed to, you are overcommitted and overwhelmed. So let's check in. Is there any area of your life, a decision or something in your past that you think about over and over and over again nonstop? Or if you ever find yourself feeling overwhelmed, is it because you are committing yourself to more than you really want to handle? Would you be better off deciding to let some things go? This reminder about overwhelm is especially timely as we enter the holiday season. Notice how you are thinking about decisions. Notice how much you are taking on and agreeing to. Check in to see if some decisiveness and then trusting the wisdom of your own decision can help you overcome overwhelm. Another popular over that pops up during the holiday season and winter months is overweight. What makes us overweight? This one is probably obvious. We all know the answer. It's overeating. But if we all know this, why does someone overeat? The biological reason that we eat is to fuel our bodies. But there are plenty of other non-biological reasons why we eat too. We eat for entertainment, we eat for comfort, we eat for connection, we eat to soothe ourselves, we eat out of habit, we eat out of boredom. The list goes on. Whenever we eat for any of those reasons, we're applying a solution, food, to a problem that it doesn't solve in the long term. We might tell ourselves that eating solves this problem in the short term, but if we're honest with ourselves, we know that food does not solve the problems of boredom, discomfort, disappointment, sadness, loneliness, and distress. And we also know that we can feel connected and we can celebrate and honor each other and the things that are important to us without food. Food is a requirement to fuel our bodies, but it's not for any of those other reasons. Some people might point out that it is not as simple as I am implying here. And I will admit, I am simplifying for the purpose of this episode. But the main thing that I'm pointing out here is that overeating can cause being overweight. What's another over? Going over budget. Why would we ever go over our own budget? Or if we know basic math, how could we ever create an overdraft in our account? Or what makes someone go over the limit on a credit card? In the most basic sense, it's overspending. Part of this might be awareness. It's so interesting when people start to track their spending and add up expenses and they see how much they spend on things that they don't even care about or services that they don't even use. Another reason why some people go over limit or let their accounts get overdrafted is because they are willfully unaware of their money situation. They won't look at their accounts. They don't realize how much interest is being added to their debt. And this is another great over to bring up just before the holidays. There is so much more marketing and so many more expectations being launched at us during this time of year. So it's easy to see how we could overspend and how we could slip over budget. What are the other overs? When do you get hungover? When do you overindulge? When you overdrink, when you go overboard, when you overdo it, when you go over your limit. All these overs, overthinking, overcommitting, overeating, overspending, overindulging. Why do we do these when these actions do not get us what we want? 
In fact, they get us the exact opposite of what we want, and they make us feel terrible. A common culprit for many of the overs is impulse. The reason why you may agree to do more than you want to do is because you have the impulse to try to please someone. Or the reason you may continue worrying about something in the future that you can't control is because your brain sends you a message, an impulse, that you should think more thoughts about this thing. The reason you go for seconds, even though you've already provided your body enough fuel, is because you get a craving, an impulse for more of that delicious food. The reason why you decide to have a drink, maybe a commercial, or you see someone else enjoying a drink and you get the impulse too. The reason you buy that thing that you don't need, a sophisticated marketer put it right in front of you as a product placement or as an ad or as a suggestion based on what else you put in your online cart or at the checkout line. These things at the checkout line are literally called impulse items. So you might think I'm about to bring up impulse control, but I am not suggesting control or willpower. I'm suggesting impulse recognition and intention. When you need to have control over something or power over something, that implies that there is some resistance there. Saying that you need to control your impulse or you need to have power over your own will implies that you are resisting your impulse or will, and that intensifies it. Your resistance actually gives a lot of attention and power to the impulse or desire. What if instead of resisting, instead of needing control and power, you could notice the impulse, recognize it as just a thought, just an offer, that you have the ability to accept or decline and then decide intentionally what to continue thinking or what you want to think instead. I'm suggesting instead of getting the impulse, worry about this, eat that, drink this, buy that, and then just following the impulse by worrying or eating or drinking or buying, you notice that the thought, the offer, that you might want to worry about something or agree to something or eat or drink or buy something is, in fact, just a thought, just an offer, not a command, not a directive, not mandatory. You still get to decide what to do when you notice that thought, that impulse. So what's the solution? How can you overcome all these overs? What can you do when you get an impulse? I have the perfect idea for you. Literally, it's an acronym that spells IDEA, I-D-E-A. Intentional decision, easily accessible. I'm suggesting you decide intentionally what you want to think about, what you want to commit to, what you'll eat and drink, how much you'll spend, what you'll buy, what you'll bring into your home, all of it. You can decide in advance, if possible, intentionally and make that decision easily accessible for yourself. Write it down. Make it into a mantra. Remind yourself why you've made this decision. Tell other people. Decide on your intentional decision and access that decision frequently so that when you are faced with an impulse, you already have the perfect answer, your idea, your intentional decision that's easy to access. At the beginning of this episode, I told you that I would give you a general strategy, that's the idea, to overcome all the overs, as well as some specific individual strategies for the specific overs. So let's talk strategy. But before I do, I just want to tell you, my coaching philosophy is all about giving you awareness around your thinking. I don't see my role as telling anyone what they should or shouldn't do. So giving these specific suggestions are just examples of what you can choose to think or to try on for yourself if you like. Some may work well for you. Others may not be your cup of tea. These are all just for illustration purposes. I am not telling you what I think you should do. What is an easy-to-access intentional decision 
when you notice yourself starting to overthink. Years ago, I learned this fun expression during a workshop that might work for you. Repeat after me. I am not the general manager of the universe. It's funny because it's true and also because our brains actually need to be reminded of this. So if you catch yourself worrying or flip-flopping to choose the best option and feeling concerned about things outside of your control, deciding to repeat that phrase to pause that spin cycle is an intentional decision you could make. I am not the general manager of the universe. What about an intentional decision when you start overcommitting? You could choose a manageable number like three, for example, and tell yourself you won't do more than three things in any given time period, like a day or a weekend or getting ready for a family gathering. Then when you realize you have more than three things on your plate, you get to decide which one is the lowest priority and drop it or delegate it or delay it so that you can keep your commitment to yourself and not overcommit, thereby sparing yourself feeling overwhelmed. There is an entire industry built up around creating intentional decisions not to overeat, and you can barely finish typing a search phrase into Google without getting hundreds of suggestions how not to overeat. I'll just share what's worked for me. These suggestions have helped me not only avoid overeating, but also help me lose weight. Decide what you're going to eat ahead of time and then decide that is the only thing you will eat. No exception, no discussion, no negotiation. Or write down everything you eat so you can see it in black and white. You can do this on paper, with an app, in a Google Doc, whichever way works best for you. Tell yourself you eat to fuel your body and for no other reason. Promise yourself that you will connect with people Soothe yourself and entertain yourself in other ways that do not involve food. Some of these strategies may not seem easily accessible to you immediately. In fact, some of them may sound repellent to you. So maybe you'll find different intentional decisions about overeating that's more easily accessible for you. Or maybe you can question your own resistance about why you think these suggestions I just gave wouldn't work for you. What's an easy to access intentional decision to think of when you have the impulse to overspend? I have a few tactics for this one. One intentional decision I think about is where I will put this new purchase. Sometimes when I start to visualize where it will go in my house or my closet or my space, I realize I already have something similar or I will see in my mind's eye that I don't really have space for it. And when that happens, it's easy for me to move on and not overspend. I've also set up my finances pretty intentionally and habitually. So I've already decided that most of my spending goes on a specific credit card where I get cash back. And I've decided that I pay the entire balance every month with no exceptions. So when I get the impulse to buy something, I can mentally calculate to see if I can easily pay off the balance. If I have to think about moving money around or if I have to wonder where I'll get the money to pay for it, I'm usually able to overcome the impulse because of the intentional decision I made and have been following for years. Those are just a few ideas for you to get over everything that's overwhelming you, making you overeat, overspend, overcommit, and all the other overs. Can you see how making Easily accessible, intentional decisions, instead of mindlessly obeying your impulses, can help you get over whatever you want to get over? I hope so. And I would love to hear your thoughts, your questions, your reactions, and any resistance that might be coming up for you about this topic. Send me an email at hi at bexby.org or leave me a comment in the show notes for this episode at bexby.org slash over.
And I have a few more things to mention before this episode is over today. I'm still looking for your feedback about this podcast, either through the anonymous listener survey or through a real life conversation with me. If you want to tell me what you like and don't like and help shape this podcast for next year, go to the end of the show notes for this episode at bexby.org slash over to find a link to the survey or the link to schedule a chat with me. And a few of you have let me know that you re-listen to some or all of the episodes so that you can take notes or do some of the exercises or suggestions that I give. So as a fellow podcast and audiobook listener and lover, I want to share some of my listening techniques with you in case they would be helpful. I listen usually while I'm walking, sometimes while I'm driving, sometimes during uh, doing things around the house, and never when I'm just sitting. So when I hear something important or meaningful that I want to think about or remember or check back later, I pause the podcast or the book so that I can make notes on my phone. And the way I do this is, especially while I'm walking, I will open up my notes and I'll dictate my thoughts or the phrase or whatever I'm trying to remember And then I can come back and read it later so that I'll be reminded of what was so impactful that I had heard. And I keep a notebook in my car so that if an idea pops out to me while I'm driving, I can just write it down when I get to the next light or when I stop. And when I'm on the freeway and I won't be stopping soon, sometimes what I do is I actually stop listening and then I just repeat the phrase or whatever I heard over and over and over again to myself until I can stop and make a note. When I listen to audiobooks, what I've been doing lately is I've started to also get the printed version so that I can go back and reread what I have heard and what was important to me. And if you think it would be helpful for you to see the written version as well as hearing the audio for this podcast, did you know that for most of my episodes, the show notes are almost direct transcripts? So if you don't want to listen or re-listen, and if you prefer to just read, you have the option of going to the show notes on the website at bexby.org slash podcast. And I also want you to know that you can get a digital version of the companion workbook to this podcast that has many of the exercises and worksheets that go along with each of the episodes. So no matter when you started listening and no matter which episode you are currently on and whenever you joined my favorites email list, if you download the companion workbook, that's a PDF, you should be able to follow along with most of the worksheets and exercises that I mention on the episodes. And you can get that PDF right now at bexby.org slash free. And if you're on my email list, you are one of my favorite people. So this week I sent you not only that free PDF workbook that I just mentioned, but also a digital wallpaper that you can put on your phone or you can print it out and display it somewhere to remind you of your ideas, your intentional decisions that you easily access to get over whatever you want to be over. If you're not on my email list yet, make sure to join at bexby.org slash favorites so you will always get the email with each week's new episode and the extra that I send out to my favorite people. Plus, you'll get invited to anything new or fun or free that I am offering. Thank you so much for listening. Have a great week and I will talk to you next Friday. This has been Release Your Resistance. Thank you for listening. If you like this podcast, make sure you're subscribed and leave a review on Apple Podcasts. Also, think about someone who you know who would love this episode and share it with them. There should be a share button on your app if you're listening to this on your phone. If you'd like to continue this conversation one-on-one or in real time, come visit me on my site at bexbead.org to see how we can work together. 